hello guys welcome to our video series on pack 18 f microcontrollers and in this video let's explore the pack microcontroller family and prepare our lab for the next videos let us now waste any more time and start by giving you the outline for this lesson first i'll talk a little bit about big microcontroller families and i'll give a short introduction to big 18 family specifically then we start installing the necessary programs that we'll need in the series and finally we open the data sheet and begin to understand how to get a microcontroller to work so let's get it done in this series, we limited ourselves to only 8-bit microcontrollers. Don't even feel disappointed, almost all the nice projects you see on YouTube are bought by 8-bit microcontrollers. All you need is just imagination and following me on this course. So, in big terminology, a family is just a collection of microcontrollers with the same architecture and same instruction set. We're not going to deep to discuss what they mean here, but all you need to know is that they have a great impact on the performance of a microcontroller. Actually, that's why big 18 f is more powerful and faster than big 16 f which is a good excuse for using big 18 f in this course. So, let us assume you are working on your first project. You've written the code, but then you find out that you need a bigger microcontroller, a microcontroller with more pins. Seems like enough shit for your first project unless you're quite a smart and decided to get another picky TNF microcontroller but with more pins. Then the process is just a matter of doing a slight modification to your code and you're done. But if you're an ambitious dude and decided to go much bigger and get a big 24 microcontroller, that's a different family and you've tried your code all over again. But this doesn't mean all microcontrollers belonging to the same family are exactly the same. It wouldn't make sense in a way. You should know that when you program a microcontroller, you don't have the luxury you used to get when programming for PC. You never ask it how much space your program takes, or what's the point of making a million integer array if I'm going to use only 10. That wasn't a stupid example, guys. But microcontrollers in general have limited capabilities compared to our PCs. They can have as low as a couple hundred bytes of memory or just a few kilobytes for most microcontrollers. They are also limited in speed. You can buy a 2 GHz multi-core processor for your PC, but mostly your microcontroller will run on a 20 MHz speed and sometimes even less. But the good news is we don't need all the crazy power we have in our PCs to make embedded systems. Even as the previous numbers seem low to you, in most situations they are far more than enough. The point is, that's why we have different microcontrollers in the same family. They differ in memory size, the space available for writing code, or the number of pins available. You can buy an 8-bit microcontroller which is enough for lighting some LEDs, but also you can buy a 40-pin microcontroller with enough pins to connect an LCD and a dozen of sensors. Let's focus on the microcontroller we're going to use. We picked up big 18 f 2550 to implement most of the projects and of course this was for a reason. Obviously it's a big 18 f family so it has all the advantages of its speed and performance. First thing the data sheet tells us that this microcontroller has a USB module. Apparently this looks pretty futuristic otherwise it wouldn't be the first thing you see in the data sheet. By the way, not all big 18 f family has a USB module. Then we move down to get a good idea on how fast a microcontroller is. For those who don't know what is an oscillator, it's just a circuit or a single component that you connect to a microcontroller and it controls how fast it executes your code. So the faster the oscillator, the faster your system, but more power it consumes. In older families like big 16 you have to connect an oscillator to the microcontroller. But in big 18 there is two options. You can either take the hard way and connect an external oscillator or just use an internal one. So let's look at the numbers. This microcontroller can run up to a speed of 48 MHz, which is far more than we need, but if you use an internal oscillator, you are limited to just 8 MHz, which is fine. On the other side, we have peripheral highlights, and this microcontroller has all the peripherals that we need so we don't have to switch between microcontrollers every now and then. Pins on this microcontroller can supply up to 25 mA of current, enough for driving LEDs or transistors. 
There's also timers, interrupts, AD converters, serial peripherals, and many more that I'll cover later in more details. So, a special microcontroller features include a C compiler, enough reason to code in C language. And I assume if you are watching this video, you have a good background in C, otherwise you should stop here, go learn at least the basics, and then come back. Then we have a priority interrupt. We delay talking about interrupts for later, so let's skip it. And this is an interesting feature, a hardware multiplier. So in Big 16 or older microcontrollers, multiplication was done in code, through addition and it was a waste of time and cycles. But by having a hardware multiplier, multiplication takes just one cycle here. Again, we have a wide operating voltage range up to 5.5 volts, and we typically run microcontrollers with 5 volts of supply. Lastly, let's see another couple numbers here. We have a flash memory of 32 kilobytes, and that's the memory where your code is stored. Then we have a 2 kilobytes of RAM. And it's not just enough for small projects, but even for large ones. Here we have 24 I.O. pins you can use to connect the external components to your microcontroller. By the way, Peggy Teen F2550 is a 28-pin microcontroller, and the missing 4 pins are used to connect to the power supply and the ground. And this is Peggy Teen F4550, and it's a 40-pin microcontroller. And it's similar to Peggy Teen F2550, except it has more I.O. pins. Enough of the data sheet, let's start installing the programs we are going to use in the next videos. Since we are writing our programs in C, we need an IDE and a compiler. Microchip provides an IDE called MPLAB and we can download it for free from Microchip website. You scroll down and go to the download section here. There is a Windows version, Linux and Mac OS. So if you, we are going to install the Windows version here, it's version 5.40. Click on it and it will start downloading. It's about 1 gigabyte as you can see here. I've downloaded it before so there's no need to repeat the process. So here we go again. After finishing downloading, it's a an XE file, you can click on it and start the installing process. Here it is. We click next, accept, and next again, choose wherever you want to install it, I choose the default location, next. Leave all these things checked and click next again. And start many group name, blah blah blah, next, next again. And it is our installing. I've already installed it. So that's it. Okay, guys, and we move on to the process of installing XC8 compiler. The link is given in the description. We go to the download section here. There is also a Windows, Linux, and Mac OS version. Okay, we're going to install that for Windows. So click on it. It just about 70 megabytes okay start download and wait for it okay here is the uh, installer we click on it to begin an installation wait for it okay look next accept and next just like as IDE installation process, there's no difference. Okay, choose a location. Keep it to the default location. Um, and okay, next, next again, and wait for it to finish, and we're done. So we have installed both the uh, ID and the compiler and we're ready to, to write and compile you know C code for PIC18 family or any family actually we're a couple of steps away from being done we're going to download Protoss for testing and debugging circuits 
In my opinion, Protus is the best software for testing circuits, especially those with a microcontroller. Unfortunately, it's not a free software, so you can either buy it or download it from the link given in the description. If you go with the second option, download it and you have this file on your PC. Right click on it, extract the Protus Professional, then open this folder. Again, and double click on the .exe file. Okay, yes, you can install it in the default location or anywhere else. Just make sure you have about 1.2 megabytes of free space. Then click next, next again. I've already installed it, so I'll quit this. Okay, last thing we're going to do is copying the crack files copy these two files go to the location where Protus is installed so click here you no know, properties open file location and just paste those files here and you're done you can open it So the installation process is done, that's it for now guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and go ahead click on the next video to begin the steps of making our first project, peace.